here we are. We're going to be doing the unboxing. I've had a couple of mishaps in previous versions of this video. So I've already removed the cellophane. I've already removed the plastic tie downs for each of the dragons. Um, just to speed up time, I'm not going to waste time putting them back just for the sake of this. We're going to do an unboxing, but I will tell you that I think you're going to be very impressed with what you see. I'm going to point out any flaws and, crit and critiques as well as the things that I think are really well done. And overall, I give this whole um, set an A-, and you'll see why. Um, it's not an A+, plus for the obvious reasons that I'll show you. But uh, I removed this cellophane, and as you can tell, I'm very, very particular about how I do things. I actually scraped my nail on the box removing the cellophane, and if you could have seen my face, I cringed. I'm very anal like that. I like to take care of my stuff. Even if I don't plan on using the box, I, I like to keep it that way. So, as you notice on these, you can, it's very, very well done. Here are the contents of the box. It's, the artwork is really nice. The box itself is sturdy. Um, gives you a nice synopsis in the back. Here you go, WizKids NECA. Um, the first thing you're going to notice when you take this off, if you plan on using the box of storage, not me, so it doesn't really matter for me because I use separate containers for all my events that I go to, but uh, if you plan on using the box as your storage for right now, there are going to be some things that you're going to see that are kind of quirky. For example, this here, there's a gaping hole that you have. Another video blogger had mentioned that she didn't know how she felt about that. Uh, I understand the marketing value and trying to attract customers by seeing three large dragons in this huge box. It is very appealing, but it's impractical if you're going to be using the box as storage. So um, I don't know if that's a design flaw. I don't know if there was any way other around it. Um, if they could have maybe done something else where I don't know. I, I can't even think of anything right now. But anyway, other than that, uh, we're going to remove now the main part that holds the dragons. Um, the tie downs go through the bag. You can remove it. Uh, remove this, and the top comes right off. It's not taped down, which is fine. I don't like tape on any of my stuff. Um, we're going to take up the uh, first one, the red dragon. This is probably the most impressive. So carefully take that out. It's got a little spacer for the wings, which is very nice. Um, you can tell that it's put a lot of pride into these miniatures. I don't have the red dragon from the icons of the realm, so I can't speak comparatively regarding them. But as you notice here, that it's very well done. Um, if you have tricks, you can open up the wings more if you want to. Uh, you know how to do that uh, to make it looking more menacing on the board. The detail is fantastic. If you look at the pupil in the eye, the ferocity of the maw and its teeth. Uh, they put the peg in where the hole would normally go for the, the other the peg for the icons of the realms. This is the standard type that they have, like for Star Trek Attack Wing. But the shading, the, the feel, it's very, very nice. Um, the next one is a gold dragon. This is my least favorite. Again, I don't have this in the icons of the realm yet, so I can't compare the paint jobs. But it's just like the whole thing is just pretty much just gold. You know, it's the only good dragon in the set. And uh, it's the weakest looking of them all. Um, I don't particularly find myself liking gold dragons in the D&D realm anyway. They just look really weird. But I mean, they did put some color on the tongue. You know, it's very Asian-like. Uh, the gold dragons go back and date themselves to the history of the Chinese uh, and other cultures as well. So it's got that kind of a classic gold dragon and Asian look. I, I like it, but not, not as much as the others. And lastly, we have the blue dragon. I do have this one, and it is pretty much the same, so I only assume that the paint jobs for the others and the icons of the realm are the same. Um, there are some white spots here that kind of stand out for detailing that were not quite as well done as I would like to have seen, especially since you're paying 50 bucks for this entire set. Um, but it is a nice miniature nonetheless. Um, again, you can do the wings out if you want to make it a little bit more uh, ferocious looking, a little bit more frightening. Those are very, very nice though, overall. You know, I, I give the, uh, the paint jobs and the sculpting uh, a, a good solid B. Uh, and then my, I've come to expect a lot from NECA regarding their miniatures. Um, 
And that's a whole other series that we can get into later another time. So we'll go ahead and put that back. And then we'll reveal now um, the components, the innards of the box. So again, it's very deep. You see the die cut tokens. You've got the uh, rule book. We'll pull that out. Set that aside. And you notice that we have a little tray inside, which is nice. I do like that. Uh, they didn't have much of a tray for the Star Trek Attack Wing. It was for the three ships at the bottom and then had just a little shallow part and then everything was supposed to go underneath. This, you actually have some tra trays so you can put your um, die cut tokens into when you're done. You know, they can you can kind of like shift things around and then maybe leave this bottom large portion of the tray, which is probably about two inches deep for all your die cut tokens, however you want. But as a standard setup, it's this way. Um, underneath the box is the larger portions. You've got the flight path six in there. And then you've got the range ruler for measuring out distances, like Star Trek Attack Wing. But instead of three, it goes up to four. Uh, you'll notice the difference in this is that there is no bonus attack die for range one. But there is the, still the bonus one for the farthest range, in this case, four. Um, we have the bases with the pegs that are standard in the Attack Wing series. Six instead of five attack and defense dice. We've got your damage cards for hits and criticals. And then, of course, your creature cards with their stats and their powers and upgrades. All their upgrades that they can come with. They are in the same standard, really nice, uh, sturdy card stock. Flight path, the powers like trickster, shield, uh, healing prayer, command. Nice. You can probably get the, what does it say, like 30, 30 cards? Um, let's see how many cards. 33. 33 damage cards. And then as far as this, um, that, it looks like they have them all broken down. Uh, 20 upgrade cards. So this, this is about 20 of them in here. Okay, I didn't take account. I, like I said, this is the first time I'm actually going through it, through it, detail by detail. I was patient for two days trying to get something set up and I'm getting very frustrated. So finally it worked out. Um, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to just go ahead and let the bag rip because I will be keep, not keeping that part of it. Um, there's a quick start guide, illustrated, very nice card stock, as standard and what to be expected. 40 pages of rules, instructions, and suggestions on how to play. It's a lot of rules, so I need to get cracking before I run my first uh, tournament. I am looking forward to this, and I've already got a lot of people signed up. So I guess I'm not the only one. So with the sheets of die-cut tokens, here is the first sheet. Double-sided, of course. Solid. Very nice. And here we go. It's got the mixture. It's got the shields, the dials, the two different dials for the... Red Dragon, the base with his attack arc, forward and rear, your straight flight pass from one to five, your different die cut tokens here, double sided of course, the shield is broken on the side when it gets damaged. For the blue dragon, the dials and the base, you've got your disabled tokens, more shield tokens and your soft uh, right or left, one, two or three. The ones for the gold dragon and your hard banks, one, two, and three. Your hourglass, more shield tokens. Oops, look at that, they just fall right on out. So that's good. Nothing worse than having die cut tokens and then having to pull them out and then they get stuck to the framing and then it rips. Oh my God, I hate that. And then lastly, you have your uh, objectives and your soft four bank. These have numbers on them. Not quite sure what they're for. I assume they're for the adventures that you can do, kind of like the mission cards that come with uh, the Star Trek Attack Wing. So this is very, very cool. I like this book, this whole set a lot. Um, there are the adventures inside here. I, I love this so much. I'm very, very excited. I'm very happy to uh, be a part of the organized play. I'm very proud and happy to be a collector and a player for not only the D&D Attack Wing, but for the thing that started my passion, the Star Trek Attack Wing. Uh, so if you are interested, I highly suggest that you give this a try. 
Uh, it's well worth it. The $50 is well worth it. Uh, again, it's an A+, except for the minor flaws in me nitpicking on the sculptings, the paint jobs, and of course, <laughs> for some reason, it just bugs me that this is a gaping hole in the front of this box. But other than that, I think uh, I think you should go get it. It's well worth it. Uh, RizKids has done a fantastic job in producing items uh, for play. Um, there are, of course, things that we can always nitpick about, talk, complain about, but all in all, I love this, and I'm so, so excited. So leave your comments. This will end it. I will be putting up another videos for the Hobgoblin Troop and for the Sun Elf Lizard later on. Hope you enjoy this, and feel free to leave any kind critiques and messages. Today we will be reviewing the Star Trek 